as we have seen from the figure the frictional resistance offered to the flow depends on the type of flow whether laminar or turbulent or transitional as such different governing laws are obeyed by the frictional resistance in the laminar and the turbulent flow on the basis of ex experimental facts for the two types of flow that is laminar flow and turbulent flow the loss of fluid friction could be framed like this so i would like to list what are the governing laws uh, of uh, fluid friction for laminar flow first loss of uh, fluid friction for laminar flow the frictional resistance in the laminar flow is number 1 proportional to the velocity of flow number 2 independent of pressure number 3 proportional to the area of surface in contact number 4 independent of the nature of surface in contact number 5 greatly affected by the variation of the temperature of the flowing fluid in fact uh, uh, the, the if you look at this governing laws if the velocity of the flow is doubled the head of the frictional resistance also gets doubled if the flow is laminar why the frictional resistance in the case of laminar flow being independent of the nature of the surface in contact what is the reason be, uh, behind this the reason is like this when a fluid flows past a surface with velocity less than critical velocity a film of almost stationary fluid is formed over the surface which prevents the flowing fluid to come in contact with the boundary surface that means the irregularities or the roughness of the pipe would not have any uh, uh, bearing over the frictional uh, resistance if the flow is laminar because those irregularities of the pipe or the roughness of the pipe will be totally submerged in that stagnant layer and also the frictional resistance in the case of laminar flow is because of the viscous nature of the fluid we also know that viscosity of the fluid depends on the temperature so as the temperature increases viscosity of the liquid will decrease therefore the frictional resistance also will decrease so temperature influences viscosity viscosity influences frictional resistance in the case of laminar flow then laminar flow the frictional resistance is almost because of the viscous nature of the fluid now if you look at uh, the loss of fluid friction for turbulent flow
the frictional resistance in the case of turbulent flow is number 1 proportional to velocity whole square number 2 independent of the pressure just like uh, in laminar flow so higher pressure or lower pressure uh, the frictional resistance remains same number 3 proportional to the density of the flowing fluid number 4 slightly affected by the variation of the temperature of the flowing fluid number 5 proportional to the area of surface in contact number 6 dependent on the nature of surface in contact most of the flows are turbulent usually the fluid flows are usually be turbulent unless otherwise the viscosity of the fluid is very very high in the case of the turbulent flow look at the first point the head loss due to friction is directly proportional to the square of the velocity and why the frictional resistance is proportional to the density of the flowing fluid the reason is in the turbulent flow the frictional resistance is not only because of the viscous nature of the fluid it is because of the intermingling of the fluid particles uh, uh, between the layers so if there is a greater mass transfer between the fluid layers there will be a greater uh, momentum transfer this momentum transfer shall cause additional turbulent viscosity also known as eddy viscosity in the laminar flow it is only sliding of one layer over the adjacent layer without any intermingling since there it is only basic viscosity of the fluid will play a role in deciding the viscous resistance or frictional resistance but in turbulent flow apart from this basic nature there will be an eddy viscosity that come into picture owing to the intermingling of the fluid particles between the layers um, because when the some particles of the fluid jump from one layer to another layer they carry momentum when they carry momentum uh, they carry uh, they uh, they exert uh, uh, force uh, that force is called as uh, uh, turbulent viscous resistance also known as eddy viscosity apart from this basic uh, uh, viscous nature of the fluid so there, there there will be additional turbulent shear stresses or viscous stresses that come into play in turbulent flow when there is a more density of the fluid there will be more mass transfer there will be more momentum transfer obviously there will be um, uh, there will be greater turbulent shear stresses that is the reason why frictional resistance is proportional to the density of the flowing fluid and uh, as i mentioned uh, just now the basic viscous nature of the fluid will get uh, reduced if the temperature is uh, uh, if the temperature is increasing therefore uh, therefore the uh, uh, the frictional resistance in turbulent flow is uh, slightly affected by the variation of temperature 
just like in laminar flow here also uh, the frictional resistance is proportional to the area of surface in uh, contact and uh, here the frictional resistance depends on the nature of surface in contact which means a rough pipe would always offer greater, greater frictional resistance as compared to the smoother pipe in a turbulent flow. Why? Uh, there is a continuous intermingling of the fluid particles. Obviously, these, these particles may be, uh, may be uh, caused a greater friction if there is a rough pipe rather than a smooth pipe. Now, I would like to derive an equation for head loss due to friction, uh, also known as darcy wisbach equation, very important equation in fluid mechanics. Equation for head loss in pipes due to friction. This is also known as Dorsey Westbatch equation. Consider a constant diameter pipe of cross-sectional area A carrying a fluid with a velocity V. Let us consider two sections L distance apart of the pipe V be the mean velocity of flow. Here let the pressure be P1, here the pressure is P2, here the velocity is V1, here the velocity is V2. Here the elevation is Z1, here the elevation is Z2. By applying Bernoulli's equation, between sections 1 and 2, P1 by W plus V1 square by 2G plus Z1 is equal to P2 by W plus V2 square by 2Z plus Z2 plus head loss due to friction. Here V1 is equal to V2 and Z1 is equal to Z2. Therefore, loss of head is equal to HF is equal to P1 by W minus P2 by W. That is, the pressure intensity of the fluid is reduced from section 1 to section 2 due to the frictional resistance um, uh, against the flow and the difference of pressure heads between any two sections is equal to the loss of head due to friction between these two sections. Therefore, that is difference of pressure heads between any two sections is equal to the loss of head due to friction between these sections. Let F dash is equal to frictional resistance per unit area at unit velocity then 
frictional resistance is equal to F dash into area into V square because assuming the flow as turbulent here the uh, usually the Darcy Wisbech equation is derived for turbulent flow Then F dash into what is the area of flow P into L into V to V square where P is the wetted perimeter of pipe. The pressure forces at the sections 1 and 2 are P1A and P2A respectively. That means if this is a section, if you take this as a control volume, this force is P1A, this force is P2A and frictional resistance is also opposite frictional resistance opposite direction therefore resolving all the forces horizontally P1A should be equal to P2A plus frictional resistance since there is no uh, a momentum change because the rate of momentum should be entering the uh, control volume should be equal to the rate of momentum leaving because the velocities are being same and the directions are also same the net rate of change of momentum is uh, zero therefore the algebraic sum of all the forces acting along the horizontal direction is zero therefore right side forces must be equal to the left side forces because the net rate of momentum uh, entering and leaving the control volume is zero because same velocity, same area, uh, both the uh, momentums are in the uh, horizontal rightward direction. Therefore, uh, the net rate of momentum change of the control volume is zero. That is P1 minus P2 into A is F dash into P into L into V square. That is P1 minus P2 is equal to F dash P by A into L V square. Divide both sides with the W specific weight of the liquid. But HF is equal to P1 minus P2 by W implies head loss due to friction is F dash by W into into P by A into L into V to the power of N. Now I define A by P as the wetted area divided by wetted perimeter as hydraulic mean depth or hydraulic radius for pipes running full this is equal to d by 4 that is pi by 4 d square by pi d it results in d by 4 it implies hf is equal to 4 f dash by w into lv square by d put 4 f dash by w as f by 2g 
implies H of is equal to FL B square by 2GD where F is called as friction factor or Dorsey's friction factor which is a dimensionless quantity. This is known as Darcy Westbatch equation. Uh, it is derived for a turbulent flow because we have used the square V square here. Frictional resistance is directly proportional to the V square we had assumed. So this is uh, derived for turbulent flow. But usually it is also applied for uh, um, uh, for laminar flow also. When we come to the laminar flow, the fluid particles move along straight parallel paths in laminae or layers such that the paths of the individual fluid particles do not cross those of the neighboring particles. Usually the laminar flows occur at low velocity so that uh, the forces of viscosity predominate over the inertial forces. The viscosity of the fluid induces relative motion within the fluid as the fluid layers slide over each other which in turn give rise to shear stresses or tangential stresses. The magnitude of the viscous shear stress or tangential stress so produced varies from point to point being maximum at the pipe boundary and gradually decreases with increase in the distance from the boundary. The shear stress so produced result in developing a frictional resistance to the flow. So in order to overcome the shear resistance or frictional resistance to the flow, the pressure of the liquid drops from drops decreases from section to section in the direction of flow so that a pressure gradient is existing. A pressure is decreasing in the direction of the flow. So now I would like to relate uh, the uh, shear uh, stress versus pressure gradient. I, I want to develop a, I want to put up a relation between uh, shear stress and the pressure gradient particularly in the laminar flow. So I would like to write in the laminar flow through pipes. The shear stress between the layers, also known as viscous stress, develops a resistance to flow. To overcome this shear resistance to flow, the pressure decreases from section to section. in the direction of flow. So that a pressure gradient exists in the direction of flow. So, I would like to write that relation. Now, relation between shear stress or viscous stress and pressure gradient in 
laminar flow if this is the direction of flow and this is the normal direction to the flow this is direction of flow y is the normal to the direction of flow the relation between shear stress variation and pressure gradient is given in a laminar flow where where tau is equal to viscous shear stress now i would like to put uh, what is the shear stress variation at a given cross section and what is the head loss due to friction in laminar flow through pipes head loss due to friction in laminar flow through pipes this is also known as huygen poiseuille equation this is exclusively meant for laminar flow whereas darcy weisbach equation is derived for is derived for turbulent flow though it is many times applied to the laminar flow also if you take a laminar flow in a pipe if you identify a cylindrical element circular element circular cylindrical element if you write the forces here p into pi r square where r is the radius of the uh, cylindrical element and here the pressure force is p plus do p by do x into dx where dx is the differential length of the cylindrical element into pi r square if we write the shear stress against the flow this is the direction of the flow shear stress will be tau what is the shear force 2 pi r into dx that is a shearing area where d is the diameter of the pipe v is the velocity mean velocity of flow so this is the free body diagram for the cylindrical element of length dx there are three forces acting on the element right side forces will be pressure force and left side force will be pressure force on the rightward section and the shear resisting force or the frictional resistance force so now i can write by from the energy balance i can write uh, from i'm sorry from the force balance p into pi r square minus p plus do p by do x into dx into pi r square minus tau 2 pi r into dx this is equal to 0 from the momentum equation or net algebraic sum of all the forces acting on the cylindrical element is 0 we get tau is equal to minus do p by do x into r by 2 the negative sign indicates a decrease of fluid pressure in the 
direction of flow here the what is tau here tau is shear stress at any location so at a given cross section shear stress changes with the radius that is an important notion that should be remembered here the shear stress changes uh, 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 with the radius at a given cross section in fact at r is equal to 0 shear stress is 0 whereas at r is equal to capital r that is at the pipe boundary shear stress is a maximum that is shear stress is changing linearly with respect to radius at a given cross section the minus sign only is uh, indicating minus sign the pressure is decreasing with increase in direction of x this is the direction of x in the direction the pressure is uh, uh, the pressure is uh, uh, decreasing as such